Okay guys, <clears throat> so many people seem to have an issue with the graph editor when it comes to animating. Um, they seem to be very intimidated by it, they seem to be confused by it, they don't seem to know how to use it properly and what it's really for, and so they basically just stay away from it, and this is very detrimental to what your work can be. Um, obviously this is referring to animators because it's we use, used way more for animation than anything else. Never even use it for modeling, don't know if that's even possible. Um, probably not because this is based on the movement of objects. So forgive me for thinking out loud there for a second and kind of working that out. Anyway, so I'm going to be using a very um, popular rig that everybody seems to know, uh, CG Terry, and this is Ray. Um, so I'm going to use him for the purposes of this demo. So I have done a very simple animation on him very simple just for the purposes of showing how some things work. I uh, made three keys on here where he's just basically you know doing that almost like a, an anticipation for a jump. So basically um, just like in modeling the controls well controls are going to be on an animated rig of course but uh, it still works on the same principle um, with the three axes, the X, Y, and Z, as if you know anything about modeling programs, they all work on the same three axes, X, forward and away, I'm sorry, excuse me, Z, forward and away, X, side to side, and Y, up and down, working on these axes. So, uh, when it comes to animating, each control that is used on a rig has nine axes basically to work with. It has the X, Y, and Z for translate, X, Y, and Z for rotate, and X, Y, and Z for scale. Scale is almost never used in animation, but you know, it's always there if you want. So let's get to it. I've made this button for my graph editor since I use it all the time, constantly. And once you know how to use it, it is your best friend. So here's my graph editor. Um, not much going on because I have just that one control uh, selected if I select everything. Still not much, but it looks like a lot because I only have three on there. So here are all the different, uh, you know, you, you get more into the animation and it turns into a big bowl of spaghetti when you open it up and, and you say, no way, no thank you. So uh, I'm going to simplify that for you if I can, hopefully. So let's take just the wrist control because that has usually the most amount of movements between rotation and translation because you know we use our hands a lot so okay here are the curves select view edit so you got a whole bunch of things up here you got a whole bunch of things up here right so we have here now on the left hand side what you're going to have here is the name of the control the visibility and you have different things for the different uh, controls that go in here different attributes uh, head space, body space, auto stretch. Let's say, for example, you had a foot control with um, toe, uh, foot roll, foot bank, things like that. Those are going to be in white because they're not on specifically one of the axes. That's an SDK, you know, set driven key for doing specific actions. So we're not going to get into that, even though the same principle applies. It can be used the exact same way. They they create their own curves. So let's take his right hand here. Okay, so you have here the setting for the IK, LK, uh, FK IK arm if you wanted to work with that. Very rarely used. Uh, I got auto stretch, body space, and headspace that you saw over here in the channel box. Now, the main stuff you're going to be working with most of the time here are the translates, here are the rotates, and apparently on this rig, the, uh, the um, scale was actually even hidden. So yeah, so he doesn't give, even give you an option in this case. And most of the times they won't because again, it's almost never used. So the way that this works is, again, you have translates, you have your rotates. If you choose any of them by just left clicking on any of these channels, it'll give you that specific curve for that control that you want to specifically zero in and focus in and work on. By the way, the navigation for the graph editor is the same in 3D space, you just can't tumble because it's kind of like a UV or an orthographic view. It's an orthographic view, not, not so much a UV, but an orthographic view where it's uh, a flat image. You cannot tumble around. 
So it's Option Alt Middle Mouse, you know, to move it around. If you want to zoom in, you can mo uh, zoom in or out. You can um, roll the middle wheel. If you want to do it more smoothly, you know, it's the same thing. Hold Option um, Alt and middle, um, excuse me, right click on your mouse, right click and drag. So it doesn't really matter up or down, left or right, it does the same thing. Left click doesn't do anything with Alt. If you, these orange dots here are representative of your keys, okay? So this is keyframe number one. As you can see, the time slider says number one. This is your value, this is your stat. It tells you what keyframe you're on. Right here, if I select that, you can either click it or you can window select. I usually like to window select. Again, one, move it up here. You see this now on keyframe six. So it's an, it's a, an exact duplication of your time frame, of your time slider here. So, you know, if you want to go to nine, here's nine, and it's on there. It's not selected. You actually have to select it in order to do anything. So if I did this and I move this, you wouldn't see anything happening because it's not selected. I'm not, you know, the, the time slider has to be on here for you to actually see anything. So if I did this and I moved it around, you would see how that moves, which brings me to my next point. So you have your standard um, axes. You have your translate X, you have your translate Y, and translate Z, you have your rotation X, rotation Y, and rotation Z. If you add all these together, it gets a little confusing, and it can when you have a lot of animation going on, but trust me, get to know how to use the graph editor and learn, and, and you'll learn some just amazing, amazing things. Here's another little trick. As far as um, being able to view the graph editor, you open it up and it's kind of compact and say, well, I, and let's say you have like a whole lot of keys in here and you need to kind of see what's going on. And, you know, this is a little too close. You, you don't want to quite do that. You kind of need to clear up some, some space. Um, one of the ways to work around that is hold shift, command, and right click drag. And this does not change anything in your animation. All it does is change your, your width of view so that you can view things. It's kind of stretching out your view of the keys, not moving the keys whatsoever. As you can see, the numbers on here for the keys are not changing. It's just stretching. You can also do the same thing vertically. You can't do it at the same time, which is very convenient. You can't stretch it out and go up. It's, you hold down the right with the shift and command and stretches out horizontally, let go, go upwards and or upwards or downwards, does the same thing. Use it all the time. It sounds like no big deal. I use it constantly. Anyway, so, um, yeah, this is pretty much the same thing that you're going to get on every single control. And so what happens is after you do your block out, you do your, um, you know, you do your secondary uh, animation, uh, you need to work on your timing, you need to start touching things up and saying, um, uh, okay, so you want to you want to smooth out some curves. So what happens is, let's say you know you have something like this, but this is you know this is happening too fast. It's coming in too hot, right? I mean, it's uh, you know it's way too quick in action. So some of the things you can do is you can either choose one and move it. Excuse me, that grab the whole the whole line. You don't want to do that. I mean, unless you actually want to move the whole line, then you would actually select a line. But most of the time, you'll use. Um, one key at a time. So the other thing that you can do is if you do want to move it down the timeline and you do actually want to manipulate or change your timing of your key, you can either do it here or you can grab your keys or one key if you want to offset um, your translate X from your rotate Y or something like that. You can grab one, you can grab them all and hold shift, middle mouse click and you can move it out and see how that changes things. So that's one way you can manipulate things. Excuse me. Another way that you can do things, and this is where the real fun starts to come in, unless you want this to be a more gradual decline. Now, I'm sure that everybody knows about CV curves that, ha that have their handles. These also have handles. You can grab a handle with the middle mouse, uh, excuse me, with the left mouse. Grab it, and then with the middle mouse, you would grab the end of the handle and middle mouse drag and you see how it 
creates that. And working with curves, the flatter it is, less action going on, less movement because it's basically flat. It's it's a, it's a flat line. It's literally a flat line where there's no movement. And then once you go down or once you go up, that's when things intensify. So like let's say if I moved all of these right here, I had a really sharp edge on that, really sharp curve. It it just it moves a lot faster because you're shortening the amount of time, the amount of space between those two moves. So take these and move them way out here. And as you can see, it's taking that much longer. So that's, you know, it's really just based on timing and animators are going to know how to work on timing. That's one of those things I'm not going to cover here, but that's a way that you can adjust timing in the graph editor. So, whoops. So one of the other tricks that you can do, some of the other tricks that you can do is let's say you grab the handle and well, you like how it's, you know, it's flat here, but you still want, you want to adjust this curve, but you want to keep this curve flat where it was. Okay. So, one thing you can do, you can go to curves here and let me see, is it curves tangent? Let me see what I'm looking for here. What am I looking for? Buffer curve. That's what I'm looking for. Go to buffer curve, go to snapshot, and what this actually does, if you want to experiment, see how something looks, you can move your key, and you'll have kind of a ghost of where it was, so that if you don't like how it looks, you can always move it back to where it was. And this will this will last for a while. I mean, it'll you know, it'll stay there until you do your next move on something else. So you can move it like that and see how that does the work. If you don't like it, you know, I mean. Depending on if, if you have your Z on or, you know, your, your undo or not, um, you know, you can keep moving this back and forth uh, until you go to something else and it'll go away. But um, even there, it'll say, oh, that's where it was. That was my original movement. That's where I want to keep it on. So you can line it back up with where you were. So the other thing that kind of segued off a little bit, the other thing that I wanted to show you, this is super, super useful. I'm sorry, I'm kind of jumping around all over the place. This was not written out, not pre-planned. Just kind of showing you the stuff that I work with and that I know. So you have some curves up here, uh, excuse me, some symbols up here. So what these symbols are, they represent the type of curves that you're using. So, you know, this is your automatic curve where it, um, it, it kind of, it gives you the cleanest and smoothest uh, curves right out of the box. All right, which is why when I opened this up, everything looked like it was pre-curved. You have your ease out, have your ease in, and that's what it's going to do for every single key that you have. It's going to automatically create an ease in and an ease out. That's just the way that the automatic works. It tries to give you your smoothest. You have here your linear, which is a good idea when you're first starting out with animation to, to start everything um, in linear, have your all, all your keys linear. That way, it's 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 a, it's a direct movement. So you select everything, hit your linear. There you go. I'm sorry, I had the wrong button. <laughs> you have your linear, and it makes everything direct A to B. So there's no smoothing. Um, there's no. It's, it's just point A to point B, not on a globe. It's you know as a crow flies, straight line. And then you can always you know switch it back if you want. Um, so here is stepped, which is also another good thing to do. So if you have, like, let's say, um, and I'm going to insert a curve, excuse me, I'm going to insert a key right here. You select the curve, hold I, you see how that crosshair comes up, hit the middle mouse. You can insert a key there without having to go down here and, and go into all that. You can insert a key live right in the key, uh, right in the, the graph editor, and then move that one as needed. Okay, so let's say you want this to be fast. You want that to be like immediate. You want there to be no movements. Just go, it's basically stepped and everybody, you know, and in animation know what stepped is. Again, I'm not going to get into what all these terms mean. You hit that, bam, it's stepped. So it's actually in the settings that you can set your graph editor for default for creation uh, whenever you want. So I like working in automatic or linear most of the time. So here is... Once again, the main thing that I wanted to show you um, as far as manipulating your curve. Here's something called breaking the tangent. 
Now you can get into trouble with this. So learn how to use it uh, uh, properly. And that's what I'm going to show you. And this goes with another thing that I'm going to show you in just a second. Hit break tangent. You see how it turned into dotted. So now what happens is I can select this. You notice how this one is no longer highlighted. Now that first one stays in place and I move just this one. But I want what I really want to do is make this like a wide curve. I want to really make that curve wide and come out. But, you know, no matter how far I drag, it's not doing it. So what do you need to do? Curves, weighted tangents. Another big one that can get you into trouble if you don't know how to use it properly. So practice with it, but know that it's here because this is a fantastic tool when you start to really get to know what you're doing with animation and you start using the graph editor more often, weighted tangents is unbelievably useful. Turn that into a weighted tangent. Okay, now what you can do is you can grab that and you can manipulate that curve. It can still go up and down and all that stuff because it's still, you know, it's still broken, but now you have way more control over the manipulation of that curve. You want to be a, a, um, a quick up and then a really wide down. There you go. And it does not affect this side whatsoever. You can grab that and then move this one independently also because it works on both sides. When you either break the tangent or when you do the weighted tangents, it works on both sides. Now, if things are getting a little messy, you're, you, you know, you're not quite sure, it's not working the way you want it to, you, you've done some editing and you want to go back to it, all you have to do is grab that. You can either go back to this, which in case what happens is they are now both attached. So if you want to keep that, um, that curve manipulated the way you want, but now you want them to both work together. Or the other thing you can do is you can go back to weighted tangents. Excuse me back to non-weighted and it will snap back to basically its origin but it's going to keep this because you already set it in. So how do you get that back to normal if you want just a smooth clean um, curve the way that it had before? Hit automatic. Resets it back to where, to where it was. So uh, those are a couple of tricks that I wanted to show you. Um, once you start using this more it becomes less intimidating because you under, excuse me, Big pardon, because you begin to understand how much power and how much control you have over your rig and over the fine-tuned controlling of the wrist, over the, the, the knees, the, the, uh, the legs, the spine, especially the spine. Oh my god, the spine is something huge that I use so often, it's not even funny. You want somebody to um, slowly um, get up or slowly kind of reel from getting knocked down and they, you want their back to kind of roll up or you know kind of uh, I'm showing you things that I'm doing with my body like you, like you can see me like there's a camera on me but uh, <laughs> what you can do here is rotate X and if you want to select more than one you don't hold shift because that's going to obviously select everything you hit one hold command and you hit the other and it'll select both of them now they both look together because I changed them together. And you can see that I have two separate curves here. So what you can do is move this out and you see that one will, meet, will move slightly different than the other. I mean, it, it's, you can barely see it on here because it's a very small example. But if you had more controls in there and, <clears throat> and more keys in there, excuse me, not controls, if you had more keys in there, um, it would show you that you can really take that, take that. So this one is moving spine two, and this one is moving spine one. So it just gives you like an unbelievable amount of control, especially when it comes to fine tuning. You want to really, you want to really take your animation to. Um, the next level, and I, I hate that expression, but it, it really fits. There's really no other way to say it. You want to really show drastic improvements on making your just your animation sing and make it really smooth. Start to use the graph editor. Start to learn how to use the graph editor. These are just some of the main components that I wanted to show you. 
These are the main tools that you're going to use most of the time. I mean, there's a ton of other tools that you can see, but these are the things that you're going to use most of the time when it comes to just really creating those smooth curves. I mean, you know, you don't want to see things like that because that's, I mean, that's just going to look janky. It's going to, it's, it's going to look bad. You can see what's going on there. You go in and what I normally do is grab, like, let's say I have a whole bunch of keys here. I, I, I work in 10 to 20 keys at a time. So small bite-sized chunks. You know, you start with the cog, then you go into the spine because, you know, arms and leg, well, legs are not going to be mostly adjusted because they're usually in FK. Um, but start with the cog, get the cog nice and smooth, which is ultimately going to lead to most likely corrections of the spine, uh, and then corrections of the shoulders and the extremities, the head, extremities, the, the head, the hands. Um, so you want to work outwards that way. You don't want to work in the hands and then clean up the cog because you could put all that effort in and based on, as an animator knows, the cog is going to basically control where the body goes most of the time. Um, and so just work in 10 to 20 frames at a time. You know, go into your, I lost my mouse, there we go. Go into your translates, expand that, start smoothing out those curves, start doing, you know, whatever it is that you need to do on those curves. Go into your rotates, start working on that, start smoothing those out, get those going however it is that you want it. And then, you know, then you choose your spine and then you do the same thing. So work in small bite-sized chunks um, as you go. It's also fantastic for troubleshooting. If, you're fl if your wrist, you know, you're doing a lot of work and your wrist is flipping out, you don't know why. You don't know what's going on. It looks fine. You know, your body is on like a um, big turn or something. And you don't know why your wrist is, is making some weird motions. Go into the graph editor. Check it out. Might have something like, you know, might have something like that that you don't want. I mean, that's, that, that's bad. You don't want that. So um, at what point, what you can do, here's another little trick. When you get into gimbal lock, which is when, you know, wrists flip out, it happens with gimbal lock a lot because the, the curves intersect. There's a cute little trick here. Sorry, in curves. This is pronounced Euler filter, not the Euler filter. People get mad at you for calling it the Euler filter. Professionals will. Uh, it's called the Euler filter. You click that Euler filter, and it will find the smoothest and most direct path um, for your control to maintain what your motion was, but it will basically untangle the ball of knots in most cases. In most cases, it's not foolproof. Sometimes you may have to go back in there and do everything by hand. Been there many times. But um, that's basically what I want to show you. If you want to take a look at any of my work at any time, I have almost all of my stuff up, including all my old history. Um, I have an art station page right here. Here I am, Steve Reach. Here's my current demo reel, which I'm still in the process of updating as we always should. And here is all of my work, including my recent commercial work from, from my job, some of my dark stuff, my um, current demo reel, some of my older work, some personal work that I've done here. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is my art station page. Please take a look. You know, I'm, I'm always open to comments, suggestions. Let me know what you think of my personal stuff. But uh, yeah, so that's a, a little, I hope that that uh, clears things up and, and hopes, and I hope to, that it maybe takes away the mystery. Uh, oh, one last thing that I want to show you. Let's say you're trying to get this on the same level as this, and you're trying to even it out, but you're, ha you know, you're, you're working with trying to keep that even. Well, that's what this is for up here. Again, stats tells you what key you're on. This is your value, positive, negative. So if you want to copy this one, you can grab this key right here. It's at 119.417. I try to keep things pretty even, so I would make that 120, then whatever, make fine-tune adjustments. You can then grab this one and change that to 120, and it's the exact same position, elevation-wise, as this one. It's not going to work in timing or time frame, but as far as where you are on the graph editor, um, value-wise, up or down, motion or stopped, uh, this is a great way uh, to just uh, kind of copy frames. If you're doing a walk cycle, you want to make sure that all your, um, all your 
cog shifts and all your foot poses are in a consistent fashion. Go in here, take a look at your, you know, take a look at your, your, your curves, your waves. Grab the down on here on this foot or on that cog. Come up here, grab it, and, uh, you know, just plug in the same value. So that way you know all your downs in the cog are the same. All of your ups are the same. All of your foot rolls are the same. So you keep things consistent on a, on a walk cycle. So that's uh, just so many things that you can do uh, on the graph editor for troubleshooting, especially for fine-tuning. So um, I hope that helped, and I hope you find this useful. So take it easy, guys.